Implementation, cleaning the remaining switch configurations. By the time you're done here, we will clean up the remaining old switch configurations to prepare for the new VLAN implementation, also known as phase one. If you were with me in the previous nugget, if you've been joining me through this IT expert series on creating and deploying VLANs to an organization, you know that we're in the middle of preparing all of our switches for the VLAN configuration. And one of the things we found, as you usually will, as you prepare for a new deployment is some squirrels have gotten into the network system and caused some inconsistencies. The switch configurations are not like they should be. So we created a checklist of all the things that we should verify just by going through the show running configs. I saw some inconsistency on our four switches and that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, I thought to myself, man, it'd be great to take you along with me through configuring all of these different switches, but I figure that it's probably going to take me roughly two hours to get through all of these different items, fix them and correct them the way that they should be. And it's going to totally blow the scope on this series to where it's no longer going to be a VLAN series. It's going to be how to configure all kinds of things on switches. And I'll, you know, you know me, I'll, I'll end up talking my head off on, oh, and this, and you should do this. And, and by, by the time it's said and done, it's, it's totally lost its focus. So I thought... What I would do for this is I would show you the method that I use to do these kind of cleanups, because I think there's a lot of value in that for you. And I'll give you one example of actually doing the cleanup, and you'll understand what I mean on why it's going to take so long to do. Jeremy's approach to cleaning up a network configuration is first off to use Notepad++. Now, if you're on a Mac, there's all kinds of text edit tools just like Notepad++, so grab whatever your favorite is. But in Windows, there's no replacing this little free utility. What I do is list each verification area. Here's what I mean by that. Every one of these things, for example, remove excess SNMP community strings, verify NTP is active and functional. Each one of those will be listed as a little highlighted item in Notepad++. SNMP consistency, NTP consistency, DNS consistency, the whole way down. Actually, this is the real file right here, and you can see that I've created a consistency section for every one of the line items that I want to verify. Then underneath each one of those, I put the switch name. We've got four switches here, so I've got four verifications to do for SNMP consistency. Then, and it was ironic that SNMP was first, I was like, oh, I don't want to show you all my community strings and all that kind of stuff. So let me go to one that's a little less sensitive, NTP consistency. Uh, I'll put into that what my ideal configuration should be for that section. So I want all the switches to be set to the Arizona time zone. I want all the switches to synchronize their time using SNTP. I'll be doing it via unicast and I'll do it to pool.ntp.org. That's what it should look like. I'll then go switch by switch and verify that configuration is there and functional. Now, one of the things I'll find a lot of times is as I do this, I'll find this is not functional because some other section of configuration isn't functional. So let me give you one example. I'm going to jump over to switch one. There we go. I already see my native CDP VLAN mismatches. I'm going to do a show running config uh, just to check out the configuration I've got in front of me. And right there, we've got uh, the clock time zone set to AZ minus seven which I'll look right there. Yep, looks good. The clock source, SNTP. Yep. Unicast client enable. Yep. SNTP server, pool ntp.org. Yes, this all checks out. This, this looks good. So let's, let's verify it's all working. I'll do a show clock and <laughs> it looks good, but I'll tell you, brother, I'm not talking to you at one in the morning right now. Um, and it's definitely not June 8, 2008, 2018. It is January 17, 2019. So we got a problem here. So even though it's configured correctly, there's something else wrong. So I'm going to do a show uh, SNTP. Let's do a status. Um, and I see it's set for pool ntp.org. The status is down. Okay, so let's do a ping pool .org. And that's probably the problem right there. Uh, we've got a DNS issue on this switch. It sounds like, um, oh, look at that right below. SNTP is the name server. Now I haven't put in the configuration, but I can tell you right there, that's our old name server. We long ago changed the IP addressing here at the office and the new DNS server is 10.225.1.6. So also get a little ahead of myself here and just type in under the DNS consistency, IP name dash server 10.225.1.6. Copy that to the clipboard, global configuration mode, no. I'll right click that in there and remove the old one, the 250. 
and then paste the new one in there. Now, I always remove the old one first because some things will overwrite the old thing. The other one will add it in as a secondary. So I don't like running the risk of having rogue configuration showing up in there. So now I've got IP name server 10.225.1.6. Bail out here, do that same ping. Cool, now we're getting to pool.ntp.org. We'll do a show SNTP status. I might be going a little fast for it to, uh, to actually sync. Yeah, it's still down. We'll give it a little bit and that should sync back up. But what I'll do for myself is now come into Notepad and I'll put right here, actually right here under NTP consistency, an exclamation point because I didn't do any configuration, at least specific to NTP. I'll simply document NTP configuration, fine, DNS issues preventing clock sync. Underneath here, I'll put the actual commands I typed in. I'll put the no 250 and IP name server 10.225.1.6. This is documentation for me and my team that when I'm all said and done with this cleanup, I can send it to them and they know exactly what commands are issued. This is not only useful to train the team, but I might break something going through all this. It won't take you too long in networking to find out. It's very easy to break something and not know it. So if tomorrow somebody comes in, it's like, ah, my XYZ isn't working, the team can pull up this change log and go, oh, oh, okay, we missed that port. Let me go in and fix that. Last thing I'll mention before I wrap up, as I mentioned, list each one of the ideal configurations, which is going underneath each one of these and saying, here's what I need to do to each one, and then document all the changes needed, which is exactly what you saw me do. The key point is there are times where you can be a little freeform, like I'm being right now, where I went in and I found out the DNS setting was wrong on this switch and I fixed it on the fly, then went in and verified NTP and maybe I'll remove and restart NTP. That's because I'm in a low risk situation. It's currently 6.50 in the morning. I think there's one person at the office right now <laughs> besides me. And it's okay for me to make these on the fly changes in a larger environment or where more people will be impacted. You'll usually just list all of the things that you need to do. And sure, you could figure out the DNS server is wrong and list that as one of the things to change, but you won't actually change it until an after hour outage window. So I've got my work ahead of me. I'm now going to go through the rest of the configuration, doing exactly what you saw to prepare these switches for our VLAN rollout.